Fundamental Counting Principle, we're at Lesson 13.1a. In middle school, we've previously used tree diagrams to find the number of possible combinations of a group of objects. We did it in Grade 7 Math 13.2. For here, we have white bread, we have a choice of turkey or chicken, and a choice of four different types of cheese. If we also have a choice of wheat bread, that gives us eight possible combinations for sandwiches. We can see from the tree diagram, we have eight here. But there's an easier way to do this than making a tree diagram. We can use the fundamental counting principle to find the number of possible combinations. So for your notes, for the fundamental counting principle, it says if there are n items and m sub 1 ways to choose the first item, m sub 2 ways to choose a second item, after the first item has been chosen, and so on, then there are m sub 1 times m sub 2 times m sub 3, and so on, to m sub n ways to choose n items. What does that mean? It's like this. Emma has four pairs of pants, eight shirts, and two jackets. So how many different outfit combinations can she make? We do the four for our M sub one, the eight for our M sub two, and the two jackets for our M sub three, and we multiply them together. Four times eight is 32, times two is 64 possible combinations. We can even do it to find the possible combinations on a lunch menu. So here's the lunch menu. It says to choose one of each. We have three entrees, pizza, chicken, or beef. There's three possible side dishes, coleslaw, salad, or fruit. And we have four possible drinks, milk, punch, juice, or iced tea. The first event would be the entree. That would be our M sub one. There's three of those. Our second event would be our M sub two. That's the side dish. There's coleslaw, salad, fruit. That's three. And our third event would be the M sub three. That would be the drinks. There's four of those. We would do three times three times four to find that there's 36 possible combinations for ordering lunch. And that's a compound event. We'll talk about that more in the chapter later on. Bob's four digit pin code is an uppercase vowel followed by three numbers. How many different code combinations are possible? So we have five capital letter vowels. We have numbers from zero to nine, numbers from zero to nine, and numbers from zero to nine. There's five vowels. There's 10 numbers from zero to nine, and again, and again. We multiply the five times the 10 times the 10 times the 10 as the M sub one, sub two, sub three, and sub four. And we find there's 5,000 possible combinations for his PIN code. For ordering a pizza, if we had a choice of crust types of thin crust or thick crust, and these four different toppings, we would do the two crust types as our M sub 1, and the four different toppings as our M sub 2, to know that there's eight possible combinations to order the pizza. Now, you might see N sub 1 and N sub 2 to N sub K in some textbooks. Depends on which textbook company you have. I know we did this in Algebra 2. It's the same thing. They're just using a different variable to represent each one, each event. So there's going to be a similar lesson of Algebra 2 15.1a that talks about the fundamental counting principle that will be linked in the description if you'd like to watch that one too. All of chapter 14 and 15 in Algebra 2 is very helpful for all of these topics in this current chapter. Our next lesson is going to be the second part of 13.1 as the B. Then we're going to follow it with the C. We're going to talk about permutations and factorials. Factorials have an exclamation point. Then we're going to talk about combinations. I hope you're doing well, and I'll see you for the next part of the lesson. Bye.